Today on The Garage Engineer, we are going to try to save this K40 laser. Now on the surface, this is just a typical K40 laser that came directly from China. There's nothing really special about it except the history of the unit. So for those new to lasers who don't know what this is, this is a K40 laser. It is supposedly 40 watts of cutting power, which just varies depending on the setup. But what makes this special is the history that goes along with it. So to start from the beginning, this is a can we save it because it was given to me in an unknown condition and the last I know that it is broken. The unit was given to me by a good friend of mine, Nick, from Run CNC, and I'll share some of the, what he creates. is pretty amazing stuff. Check out the description below for a link to his social media. He told me that this unit was given to him by another good friend of mine, of Joel, from Missing Digit Workshop, and he's another great creator and a great businessman, too. He's got a lot of products on Amazon. So Joel gave this unit to Nick saying that the tube no longer works. So we're going to assume that's one of the problems that's wrong with it. But as Nick held on to it for about a year or two, uh, it, he was also given by a local makerspace an old tube. So this is an old 40 watt tube that when it was taken out, it was still good in good condition, but they were just upgrading their laser tubes. So this might have some life in it, and it'll give us something to test if we can't get the original CO2 working. And worst case scenario, if everything else looks good and the tube's not working, we can always just order a brand new one and stick it in. But this is pretty exciting. Uh, I've looked over it just a little bit, and there's a lot that needs to be done to it, but it also looks like a really fun challenge. And if you're familiar with the K40 scene, there's a lot of upgrades you can do to this and make it very usable. It's usable out the box, but you can even make it even better by adding some mods to it. So the first thing we need to do is get all the sawdust out from inside of the unit. Alright, now that we got everything dusted and clean, let's turn around. We're gonna try to see if the tube we're gonna see if the tube works. But first we need to get some cooling going through the tube. And uh, we'll just use distilled water. But since these tubes were exposed, um, they've got some dust in it. I'm gonna try to take it off from the ends here, and then we'll blow some air through it. So we'll see how well we can get to that. Or not. Let's see here. So the tubes look like they're on there pretty good and without having to take off the, tu the tube itself, the water tubes um, aren't going to come off easily. So what, I see a little bit of dust just on the end. I think I'm just going to cut the end off and maybe we can just do it that way. Um, and hopefully there's no other dust in there. Um, if not, we'll pump it out. So let me get some cutters. Yeah, it's pretty clean in there. So we'll just cut the tips off that have the dirt in it and we should be good to go. So for our cooling setup, we're just going to use a, a bucket with distilled water in it. We're going to use a fountain pump. Now this one I got off of Amazon. I'll have a link down in the video description below. This one, uh, the big key, you want to get, I think they really say you only need about a liter per minute. So that's 60 liters per hour, even 150 liters. Uh, per hour would be fine. This is 1500 but it's adjustable with the uh, just little vent here so we're gonna turn it down real low right like that. We'll do it. And then the big thing too is you want to make sure that the lifting capacity is at least five foot so you can put your bucket on the ground and have it pump up. This is six and a half feet, uh, two meters so uh, this is definitely and it was only about 20 bucks so it wasn't that bad. The only issue though is that it, the, the tips that it come with, comes with, the smallest I think is like three eighths of an inch, which our tubes are a quarter inch. So what we'll have to do is, uh, what I did was ordered this piece. This is a quarter inch barb, but the, I couldn't find the, uh, this is a half inch diameter 
and the only thing I could find closest was a 3 8 so I then had to get an adapter uh, to hold 3 8 to half inch so that should work um, if we can find I'll see if I can find this part uh, going to half inch but I couldn't even at Home Depot or, um, or online uh, or at Amazon so what uh, so this will work we'll get some Teflon tape for that and here I just got six of these these are the, this is the packet that the the, uh, the quarter inch piece came in was a packet of six so we have some extra so we've got our Teflon tape here we will put some on the ends here give it a couple wraps you want to keep the Teflon tape away from the end there because you don't want any of the excess tape to get sucked up into your pump so uh, we'll do that there put some on our adapter piece make sure you're spinning it to putting the tape on so that when you spin it on that the tape gets pushed uh, if you do it the other way then as you're spinning it on the tapes just gonna come unraveled so um, that should do that see I'm, how I'm spinning it on and the tape stays plate and put okay don't over tighten it uh, I don't want to crack it here. Alright. We'll keep the bucket on the table. So here we'll just get the inlet tube here. And we'll connect it. I'm actually... We're going to use one of our... I don't know if that will... That should tighten down. We'll just put our tube down in there. All right, and we will tighten that up. Now you don't want this pump to get dry, uh, so you want to make sure there's water and it's filled with water before you turn it on. And there's no on-off switch for this, so you just got to. So I'm going to use a uh, power strip to use as the on-off switch. So now we'll just put our pump in the bottom of our bucket here it has suction cups so let's see if we can get it to stick there you go we'll have our return line and I'm going to tape that so it doesn't fall let's get a little bit of tape so there you go we got the return line taped and, and this is distilled water make sure you use that you don't want to use anything else so it doesn't have any chemicals or anything in it so we'll go ahead and pour that in so right there that's a gallon and a half of water We'll see how much it sucks up in the actual system, and I've got another gallon we can add to the to it to get the water level up. So now let's uh, get the pump going and see if we have any leaks in the tube itself. Here's our power strip. We will turn the pump on. And you can see the water flow starting here and flowing through the tube. And it's coming out the return. So if we want to determine the flow rate of our pump, what the setting, what we'll do is we'll catch the return water into our gallon bucket. And once it's up, uh, we'll see how much it fills up in 60 seconds. And then that will tell us our uh, rate per minute of, uh, of flow that the pump is doing. So let's get this set up here. All right, we've got our stopwatch. I've got a return line. 
It's going to be tricky doing both at the same time here. And start. So we'll give that 60 seconds to see how much this is getting filled up. So that's the 30 second mark. That's probably about, that could be about a liter or so. So if you get a liter a minute, then you're doing fine. That's going to be plenty. Uh, I'm going a little overboard just because I don't know and there's not really any documentation um, of what the actual rate needs to be for K40s. And I'm going to turn the pump off here at our 60 second mark. There you go. So that's 60 seconds. We'll stop that and we'll check how much water came through. Alright, so we've got a measuring cup. We're going to put our return pipe back into the bucket here. And this is a, a cup, so there's 250 milliliters. We'll just, we'll count how many two, 250 milliliters cups we use. That's one. Over five. So we're looking at 1.25 um, uh, liters per minute. So that's at a good uh, setting for uh, what we need to use it for. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so we got water. It flows through. There's no leaks. Uh, we're getting a good flow rate. So I guess the next thing we want to see if uh, does it power on. Not not if the sh laser shoots. Just to see if the power is on without any issues. All right, it does power on. It was on. I should check to see if the off button was off. I saw the gantry move, so I'm going to turn this around now uh, so we can take a look at it. Before we do that, though, I want to add a piece of tape. This is going to what we're going to call mirror one, and we are going to uh, put a piece of tape just to see if the laser hits it or not. So let me turn this off before I get my hands all in there. So we got mirror one right here. We're just going to put a piece of tape on the mirror. You want the lens to be about a half an inch away and it's not even set or anything. We're not worried about adjusting. We just want to see if this thing fires. So let me get uh, everything situated, turned around, and we'll check it again. Move the gantry just so we can see it uh, move when we turn the switch on with the power here. There you go. So it's got must have some limiting switches. I haven't seen them yet, but they must be in there somewhere to tell it where to go. And I'm going to open the lid here just to make sure fans are moving. We got a, the exhaust. Uh, it's not the exhaust fan, but it's for the exhaust for the power supply on the box. The fan back there. That that's to draw the heat from for the box and getting some circulation here for the the control panel. We've got the power supply has got the fan blowing. And we know X and Y moves, because uh, so that's hooked up. The control board is on this side, and everything looks plugged in. And we got a green light for the power. Got fans blowing. So I guess the next thing is, let's just do a test. You can see right here, this is mirror 2. This is mirror 3. Mirror 2 is all messed up, so we're going we're gonna to adjust that in a minute. And um, but let's let's do a test fire to see if that tape burns. Here's the control. Here's the current regulation that's to determine how much power the uh, laser shoots. I'm gonna have it all the way down because we just want it to be real light. Uh, this is a test fire switch. And I think this is the on off um, to turn the laser on and off just for a safe as a safety. And then you got your power here. So we're gonna turn that on here. So it's hot. Now this test switch, I, I was playing with it a little bit earlier, it's a little sticky, so I might have to turn the unit off real quick if this thing doesn't pop up. See, it's not popping up. That's concerning me there. Let's see if, uh, if we had anything go through the, the laser or not. 
We didn't have anything fire, but this button bothers me that it sticks. See, it sticks like that. It should be a momentary switch. So I'm going to unplug the unit. And let's, let's change this uh, switch out. I've got one right here. It's a momentary switch also. It's not a square, but it should work. I don't think the wires matter which way they go since this is just a momentary switch. But that's the way they were plugged in, so we'll go with that. There you go. That should work. It's a little stiffer. But at least it won't stick like the other one, so... We'll, maybe we'll clean that up. See, now it's working. Well, I don't know what the deal was, but I feel better with it fixed like that. Okay, let's try that again. We're going to turn the unit on. The gantry sets itself. We'll turn the laser switch on, power it on. Nothing. Let's turn it up a little bit. I'm not getting anything. No firing. Yeah, I don't see anything moving on the uh, milliamp, and I don't hear anything, so... Let's go take a look at it in the back there. I'm going to turn it off. Alright, let's check right back here. Yeah, if you see the tape, there's nothing. So it wasn't firing or anything. So let's let's dig in a little bit. So I try to test things before I start replacing parts and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't something to do with the uh, actual unit itself not producing power uh, before we change this tube out um, and maybe the, uh, we don't know if the tube's bad or if the circuitry was bad. So what I wanted to do was test to see if we've got power coming to the power lead right here. So what I did was uh, first, uh, well let me show you what how I got this set up first. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the unit is getting power and that I have a good grounding source. There is a grounding uh, knob in the back right here, but I wanted to make sure that it is connected and getting uh, to the ground here, which I saw what inside the wires is going properly, but I wanted to make sure that is it's going there. So the first thing I did was I hooked up to the ground and I'm testing just for 120 volts. So I've got my multimeter here. I really like this one. This is also an amp clamp. It's, uh, it's really good. Um, I've got the negative terminal alligator clipped to ground. And then what we'll do is we'll open up the unit here. And I don't even have to turn the unit on because the power as long as it's plugged in and there's power going to it, um, I can show you we've got power going to the switch. So there, we've got 120 volts going to uh, the switch. So that means we got power coming into the unit. And let me show you from this angle what I was doing was I was connecting. Uh, we got the ground set to ground, and we're just touching the the switch, the line going to the switch, and it's showing 120 volts. So we know power is going into the unit. Um, and coming to the switch so uh, we know so that gives it we're trying to eliminate to make sure things aren't uh, or things are working properly so we know we're getting power to the unit now I wanted to see if power is going to the uh, actual tube so that was the next step so we still got our ground here now we're going to clip the alligator lead to the top of the tube. So once we're connected to the top of the tube, then we're just going to connect to this to our positive. Nothing was happening. So I turned the power on. It's showing two volts nominal. But when I push the test, turn the laser on. You see it goes to overload, so this is probably over the uh, voltage limit for, uh, and this goes up 600 volts, so I don't know what's going on, but this is going over, 
the unit can't measure it. So instead of doing that, I decided let's figure out what the amperage is. If we can at least get amperage, then that'll show us uh, that we've got something going through. And plus, with it overloading, that means we've got power going to it. We don't know how much, but we've got power going to the unit. So what I did was I switched to 400 amps. There you go. So now it's on. Uh, that's on DC, but we need to make sure it's on AC amperage. And then we're going to set min max, kind of like that, because this is going to be kind of quick. So it's going to it's going to mark the max setting there. I'm going to push the laser switch, and I did a test fire with the test the laser test fire switch, um, and. It get, gets up, you hear that buzzing in the actual unit. That's 156 amps. So we know it's getting some power to the tube. It's just the tube isn't, uh, is definitely broken. So uh, let's switch out the tube with the one that we've got supposedly is good and see if that helps any. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this lid so it doesn't keep falling on me. It just pulls a little lever right here and you can get the lid off. And we need an Allen. It's three millimeter. I can't get to the back one. Let's see if we can loosen this up. It's three millimeters. Oh, there's some access holes right here that you can stick your wrench down. So that's nice. Move the grounding wire out of the way. So we just need to unscrew both sides. And we just move over to the other side and unscrew this bracket off. So we're unplugged. Let's take the let's take the ground wire off here. Just has a rubber tube to cover it. The exposed end. And then I think it's just hot glued. Yeah, it's just got a little bit of hot glue on there keep the wire on and the wire is just wrapped around it. I'm going to clip the zip ties off with my favorite Nipex diagonal cutters here. These things are sharp. And then down on the other side here there's some more holding the positive lead on. Now there's some water still in here. I'm going to also take the cap off and the positive lead off here. And it's just hot glued. There's the wire. It's hot glued on. So now the only thing holding us is the water inside the tube in here. Let's see if we can lift it up. Maybe we get each side out. Without making too big of a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two tubes off camera, and then we'll I'll bring it back. So I've rem I just cut the rubber tubes off, and then I cut the tape because I want to save this rubber gasket, or I guess not gasket, but a protective mark here. I don't know how we're going to get that water out. There you go. Well, I'll drain that in a little bit. Well, let me show you the new tube. But really, this is a new to me tube. Uh, you can see this is what was donated from uh, the uh, Makerspace. Supposedly it worked when it was removed. Um, luckily, it's got all the positive lines and the negative line on here, so I know which way to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take them, take that off and we're just going to connect directly to it. This has got a connector on that end, but I think we're just going to do how it was before. Because I don't have a connector to match that up with that. So let's, uh, wonder if I can get some isopropyl alcohol, maybe we can clean this up, tube up a little bit. I, I don't think it really matters, but we'll clean it up a little bit and then we'll get it put into the unit. So here on the other side, just quickly, I took off the, there's a little bit of a return line that was left on, 
and uh, took that off and took off the wire that they left, the lead wire on here. Then I took 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded the lead right here just to make sure because I didn't want, I don't want this the corrosion to be the cause of it not getting power. So we're just cleaning the tip there so it gets a good electrical connection and then using our isopropyl alcohol towel and cleaning it up after there. So we'll do that same thing on the other side and we'll start the installation. Now that the tube is cleaned and ready to go, I am going to kind of get it positioned in place and mark it where we're going to put the brackets. So it's going to be about a half an inch away from the tube, I mean from the mirror. We'll adjust it in a minute. Something like that. So we'll have one there. And one bracket there. So we'll make that mark. And then we'll put our rubber pieces back on. Let's get some electrical tape too. So as I was putting on uh, the rubber sleeves here, I did notice Look at the pink in the middle of the tube. I'm not sure if that is the gas that's in there compared to the one we have here. There, It's perfectly clear, so maybe all that gas escaped. So maybe that's a good sign that this unit is still good. You can see how the dark line is right here. So hopefully that's a good sign and, um, and that's just not colored glass. Uh, so when we put it in, it'll actually fire. Just take some electrical tape and we will wrap up our rubber sleeves here all right get her laid back in place so like I said we want this to be about a half an inch away actually we're not going to line the mirror yet but we are going to at least set it properly we're going to take the retaining clips the stop nuts off let's loosen that up that's well you get it there you go these are the adjustments for the lens. They're pretty tight. And we want to get the lens to be flat. evenly spaced between the bracket right here so we want the spacing right between the, the the back part and the front part to be about even so we have plenty of room to adjust so we're gonna just get it out just a little bit more so we can go with it in and out that'll give us plenty of room to go in and out and adjust to make the adjustments that we need. So now we want to be half an inch from that. Roughly. Which is about right there. So that's what's going to be our, our setup for that. Now you can put the hold downs back on the tube so they won't go anywhere. It's in there pretty good, so let's hook the wires back up. You know what we forgot to hook up? We need to go back and hook the water tubes, uh, water lines in first uh, before we get any farther. That's going to be the tricky part.
We're gonna take it out. I think it'd be easier. So it's easier to put the water lines on before we put it in there. So we took it out, and now uh, we're gonna reinstall it again. And then we'll hook the wire. Maybe we'll put the wires up too. Well, as long as the wires are out, we can, we can put them on after. Let's go ahead and uh, get it uh, bolted in. So this is the return line, water out. And this is the water in. It will go in the front here. All right, so now we're back to where we started here. Let's put the brackets back on. Make sure the tube is again half an inch away about. Looks good there. I'm sure we're gonna have to make some adjustments. So as long as we get it in there, we're, we're, really the goal is we're just trying to get this to see if we can get it to fire. Is our main goal. You don't want it too tight around here. Just enough so it holds it in. Perfect. All right. So now we'll just start connecting our wires. So we just need to connect our positive lead here, wrap it around, and I'm just going to do what they did and put some hot glue on there until we can figure out a better way to do it. We just don't want it to move. There's one, and we'll get the negative line on here. All right, let's get the hot glue gun out. We're gonna do a MacGyver hot gluing. We're just gonna get our lighter, heat up one end, and then we'll smear it on there. Just enough to hold it on. Where's your little cap? Put our cap on. And we'll just repeat the process for number for our power lead here. We'll make sure it's tight on there. And we'll just smear a little bit of hot glue on there. Perfect. Just like new. And we'll get our cap protective cap on there. Let's get some zip ties and we'll zip this on so it won't go anywhere. Here's a little trick. When you get a bag of zip ties, cut them in the middle here rather than the top. That way you can dispense them from the middle and then they don't fall out everywhere. It's a little trick I learned. I've been using it for a long time now. All right. That's on there. Hopefully that's good. Let's get the other side. There we go. Get the safety cap back on here. Clip the ends flush so you don't get cut yourself. I think we are back the beginning now let's hook up the pump run some water through it just to make sure we don't have any leaks and then we will do a test run on it so we got the pump we'll do the water inlet put the line on the pipe clamp the screwdriver We'll get, we'll get it back in our bucket here. The 
probably want to get the bucket back on the table. Probably need to extend these lines out, but we'll do that. I've got a few other things I want to do with this water line. So we are going to get this taken care of. So this is interesting. This is a little bit different. The water goes around the tube. There's a tube around the uh, gas that it goes around. So it doesn't fill up the bottom. So I don't know if the other one has a crack in it and that's why the water was filling up at the bottom of the tube the bo or if uh, or if it's just a different way it's made so I'm not sure alright let's get the top lid back on we'll get the power cord set up Alright, power's on. So the next test is just to see if when the power goes on, nothing major explodes or smokes. So let's try that out. Okay, it homed itself. We got the power down all the way. Later switches on. Do a test fire. Oh, turn it up a little bit. I hear something. I hear a hissing noise. So let's see here. I don't see any of the paper burning. Turn it up a little bit more. I hear something. Oh, we got it. We got it. This is exciting. And it looks like a good strong burn too. Oh, I can smell it. Do you see that black on the tape? That means we're getting a good burn on it. That's awesome. So it is the laser tube. All right. The battery is going, so let me uh, switch batteries out. I'll bring it back. So before we are rudely interrupted with the camera battery dying, you can see the black mark on the tape. So the laser did fire. What we heard was the firing of the laser. Let's get that tape off and take a look. It's kind of in the middle too. I'm impressed. So look at that. It did burn the tape like we wanted it to. So that is awesome. So that's one thing down. So I think the next step that we want to do is let's clean the mirrors. Uh, so any dust or anything that's on them, they won't get burned into them. And then let's uh, work on aligning it uh, to see if we get the laser. But I am very happy that we are getting to a really good point. So I'm going to unplug everything. Uh, so we can safely work on the machine. So again, I'm going to take this lid off because it keeps slamming on me. Let's see here. We're going to get this lens out. I think it unscrews. Yep. So I'm unscrewing the lens. It's hard to see with all the water. Let's take a look and see what, how the lens looks. Didn't look like it had much usage on it. Because the other tube looked a lot worse than this tube. I mean, a lot better than what this tube looked like. This is the O ring. So you can see it is kind of dirty. Let's give it a good clean. Um, let's take it to our bench here. So here I'm just going to get the old IPA out, isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 91. Ooh, I'm using 91% instead of the 70%. So we'll see how that works. Take the cap off. It is pretty. What I'm going to do is if this unit does it start working really well, then I am going to get the upgraded gold mirrors. And, uh, oh yeah, this looks pretty good. Just hasn't been cleaned in a while. 
It doesn't look that bad. Uh, what I said, I was going to upgrade and get some of the gold mirrors and uh, and maybe and get a new lens, but I don't want to put a lot of money into this yet. You can see how dirty. You can see how dirty that lens was. Uh, I don't want to put a lot of money in this until we know that it actually worked. So now I'm taking the dry side, just kind of gently cleaning it. I mean, it's it's not the cleanest, but I think it'll work for what we need it to do. And two, this the beam was hitting pretty. I think it's hitting right in the middle of the mirror, which was pretty amazing. But we we'll fix all that in alignment. Yeah, I probably need a new mirrors, but uh, one step at a time. I'm just gonna clean some of this debris that's inside the case here. Okay, so we'll get the mirror back in. Perfect. All right, let's do the two in the front and see how the lens looks too. I'm gonna go ahead and take the lens off or the cover off of this one also while we're cleaning it, just so it doesn't slam down on us. Put that there. We're going to move the gantry slowly forward. Now I want to show you, I'm going to go ahead and fix it. The bracket is all kind of cattywampus. The screw isn't even in this one, or on the two right here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's we're going to loosen all these. They must have had issues with it. Try to get it aligned, we'll get it fixed. These pliers are flat face instead of rigid so that it doesn't uh, strip the bolts. It's a little easier, especially if there's a brass. If I can get them in there, there's not much room. Let's see if I can unscrew it. Let's just take this bracket out. I can't get into it, I can't reach anything. I'm gonna take it, and it's loose already, so. It's not like it's helping us any. We're going to have to reset the alignment anyway, so it's not going to mess anything up. Yeah, this back screw is completely loose. I think they're having alignment issues also. So, I don't know if you can see a little better. There you go. You can see how the screws are not even in the holes where they're supposed to be. It's all kind of lopsided. So we're going to try to get all these screws loose so we can reset it. Probably got knocked in transportation or something like that. But it also looks like the beam was hitting way off. I mean it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle but this was way off so maybe that was another issue. There you go, so let's pull out there. There you go. You want to get this about halfway. All the ends to be the same. That way it'll be easier to adjust later. Now these don't hit the... There's indents on the front piece and the the screw isn't hitting one of them. I think it's just kind of off. And get our Q-tip, our IPA. And just give it a good clean. All right, let's get the mirror back in there. Retaining ring on. It's a little dirty on the outside here. I don't think it matters, but I want to clean it while we're in here. So I had to pause after we cleaned the lens, but we got it all put back together. So now let's reassemble it and let's check to see kind of where we are, uh, where the laser is hitting on mirror two. So we have some lateral movement uh, left to right. Uh, so that will, we'll try to get it somewhat close to the center. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. And then we'll make the adjustments, but I want to at least get it close to the mirror, uh, somewhere on the mirror. So we'll do a quick test here and see where we're at. Now we'll put just a little bit of tape in the mirror just so we can get an idea of where it's hitting on the mirror itself. 
We'll leave that there. Okay, so we'll close that up. We will turn on the main power and the pump. We always want to make sure we got water flowing through. So we got the pump going. I can hear it. Turn the power on. It's going to reset itself. Turn the laser on and do a test fire. Let's see if it went through there. Nothing yet. Let's turn the power up just a little bit. So I think I'm going to move the mirror over to maybe I'm not hitting the mirror. Maybe it's adjusted too far over. So let's do that and see if we can get uh, something to go through. All right, let's try again here. Turn it on. Turn the laser on. Turn the power down. Nothing. So I was having problems. Nothing was hitting the, the mirror at all. I didn't know what was going on. So I put this card up just to see if I could hit, catch the beam. And you can see where the beam's going through. You can see completely the beam is like missing the mirror altogether. So that is way out, the back mirror is way out of whack. So we need to get that square first um, before we try to adjust mirror number two because we're way off right now. So here we are on the back of the unit. Took the lid off again and we're going to zoom in to mirror one real quick here. This is the bracket to the unit. And then there's a bracket holding the, the, the mirror one unit together, and it is going this way. So same direction as what, so we need to adjust it. And I don't know what screws, let's see if we can get a little lower down. So you see the mirror bracket is at a weird angle right here compared to the frame of the, uh, of the unit itself. So we need to get that and kind of twist it that direction, the back of it that direction to adjust what we need to. There you go, that straightened it up a little bit. Let's see how that works. I don't know if we're too close now, we're touching the actual uh, tube, we don't have to move that back. But for right now, let's see what we got. So I'm just going to put a card back in here on, in front of mirror two, just to see kind of where we're hitting. Just to get a rough idea. Set the laser to on, do a test fire. We probably need to go back and adjust mirror one now. I don't think it's hitting it. I don't see it hitting at all, so we got to adjust mirror one first. Let's go back and do that. So I think what we're going to do, I removed the lid on the back. We're going to move the tube back a little bit, just so it's not touching the mirror. And then um, we'll uh, see where it's hitting the mirror now, uh, after we do that move. There you go. Now it's not touching the mirror. How far do we got? It's about half inch to the end of the, to the, end of the tube, to the center of the mirror. So that should give us enough play there. Let's tighten it back down. All right. Let's put a piece of tape on the mirror number one and we'll see where it's hitting. Well, I saw smoke, so let's see what, where we, what we got. All right. Ooh, I can smell it. We don't have the ex film extraction yet. Fume extraction yet. But we're hitting the tape again, so let's take a look here. But you can see right in there, it's hitting the tape. It's a little high on the mirror. That should be all right. All right, I was about to get to the point where I needed to hook up K40 Whisperer, uh, the software on my laptop, to control 
the gantry and to allow me to ha have it turned on and release the gantry so I could move it by hand. However, as I was going to hook up the laptop, I was going to the USB interface and I realized that is a USB A, not a USB B connector. And I do not have, that's the only cable I don't, do not have. I have uh, other type of USB A to B cables and I don't have that so it is on order with Amazon. It will be here tomorrow. So we will uh, have to pause for today and continue uh, at another time. We'll bring it back. For you, it will just be a second. So we're going to go ahead while we're waiting um, for the, the cable to arrive. We're going to clean the lens that just takes unscrewing the bottom here. And nothing came out. Alright, let's see here. It, I feel it. It's stuck up in there. Let's get the, hopefully that won't fall. Let's get the mirror out also. I'm gonna go ahead and put this towel cloth under here so just in case if the lens does fall, it will fall there safely, it won't scratch. And I all I'm doing now is just loosening up the screw that holds the mirror in. As you notice, while we were waiting for that cable to arrive, I moved locations, had to do a few jobs with the table saw so I needed to make some room here oh yeah that lens is all dirty alright let's get this mirror off to the side we'll clean that and I just got a bamboo skewer and we are going to push the lens out oh yeah it's got sawdust all in there Yeah, this definitely needs to be cleaned. Now this has the concave going down. I thought you were supposed to have the concave going up. I need to check that. We'll double check that, which direction it's supposed to go. But we'll clean that. Let's get over to the table and we'll clean, clean it out. Okay, so we got our tuxedo Sam with his broken hat I need to fix. I've had him since childhood. He keeps all my Q-tips nice and clean there. IPA, isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%. I don't know if it's too strong for what we're doing, but it will have to do. And we're just going to clean the mirror. The center of it looks pretty good. We can get this aligned right. We should have a pretty good mirror, at least temporarily. And we can always upgrade to get the maximum efficiency out of it, too. Now this lens had sawdust all over it. I'm sure, I'm going to look it up just to make sure I know which way the lens needs to go. If it's concave up or down. I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments the right way. But uh, I'll look it up before we, we put it back in so that we get it the right way. But it was concave down, which I think would make sense. But for some reason I was thinking, I read somewhere that it needed to be concave up. But I will double check. This was just covered. In, the lens looks really good. It's covered in sawdust on the inside. But, I mean, it looks really clean. All right, we got the lens concave down. Got the cap. We're just going to gently, let's see if, well, before we do that, let's clean the inside of the case. Perfect. All right. Now we can get the lens on. That looks really, really good. We got a nice clean mirror. We'll put mirror side down. And let's tighten up the bracket. All right. So everything, all the mirrors are clean. All the lenses are clean. We're going to go, we'll do our test when we get uh, K40 installed. Good morning. A lot has happened in the past 24, 48 hours. So the last time we left, which was mere seconds for you, was we cleaned the uh, third lip mirror and the lens while we were waiting for the cable to come in. Since then, the cable has come in and I was just playing around because I wanted to get up to speed to make sure everything was working. So when we started doing the calibrations, uh, everything would work and we could just go right into it, which I'm glad I did because I spent about four hours yesterday 
figuring out some things and uh, let's just go through it and I'll kind of I'll roughly give you a synopsis of what happened yesterday. So the reason we had to take a break was because we are waiting for a cable so that we could hook up our laptop directly to the K40. And here is a USB-A. So we needed a cable that would be a USB-A on both ends so we could hook one up to the laptop and one up to the uh, laser. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's see. Nope. Turn it around. There you go. Okay, so we are now connected from the laser to the laptop. Now, that wasn't a problem, but when I was... Uh, the typical program you use for K40 lasers is called K40 Whisperer. It was an open source program that was created to to bypass the laser draw, laser DRW software that comes with these Chinese units. That's a terrible program I hear. And since I didn't get any software with this machine, uh, I was able, I'm thankful for this project. This is an open source project, the K40 Whisperer. And I thought I could just download it and hook it up and start using it. Well, I tried it and nothing was happening. It was recognizing the machine but it was not unlocking the rails, which is the whole purpose of why we wanted to do all this, so we could test our laser. Nothing was working. So I did a little bit more research. I actually came into the unit itself. Let's see here. And if you look in here, see that board? That's the control board, and I'll, probably, I'll put a picture up on the screen. It's actually made by Moshi Soft which is a, uh, a K40 uh, distributor, uh, but the unit was made back circa 19, I mean, I'm sorry, not 19, 2013. Uh, the board actually has, I think, a manufacturing date of 2015. But what I've learned since then, so Moshi Soft, which is now, I think, Moshi Draw, I tried looking them up on their website. Um, they're still around, I think. The website's still up. Uh, but what I found out was this Moshi board was a proprietary software board that had to use their Moshi Draw, which is another Chinese software program that's somewhat difficult to use. Um, and I, can, I tried downloading it, and I couldn't even find a way to download it. So um, I stopped there and um, found out that this is an older board. So what it comes down to, the hit, what I looked, found out, was this Moshi board is a proprietary board that came out before the current reiterations of K40's laser, which they're still kind of proprietary, but they've but it's been hacked that the K40 Whisperer can use the newer boards. I think they're called M2 boards um, easier, but this board can't be used with K40 um, directly because this had a, this was set up a little bit differently. But this is why I love the maker community and people with passions in different areas. Now, I have passions. They're not always in the same areas of the things that I like to uh, work on. Um, but I appreciate others who have a passion and are hyper-focused in a certain field. There's a group uh, from, I think it was MIT, that wanted to uh, re-engineer the Moshi board for it to work with an open source program. And they created Meerkat. Okay, so Meerkat. So this was K40 Whisperer. Let's minimize that. This wasn't working. So I'll give you the short end of it because this is getting a little long. I want to get back into working on the machine. This is Meerkat. M-E-E-R-K-40-T. So kind of cute name on this. This is another open source program that was specifically made to... Um, well, I don't know if it's specifically made for this Moshi program, but uh, this is another K40... Uh, program to control it, but they created the drivers after re-engineering or what uh, the back engineering the uh, board, the Moshi board, and created a driver so that it can be used directly with the machine. And this is what I've used. Now, from what my readings also, and I haven't gotten this far yet, is that if you have this up with with the drivers work um, connected, then you could minimize this program and use K40 Whisperer and maybe 
even Lightburn, um, you just have to use the higher version of Lightburn's DSP. There's two different versions of Lightburn, which I haven't gotten that far yet. I just want to make sure this thing works before we go any farther. But that will be great if we can get uh, this K40 machine to work with Lightburn would be great. But if, if it works with just Meerkat, then I'll be happy. Um, we'll get it going because the program doesn't look too bad. It looks like it has a lot of good functions. It's got a camera function and all this. So I haven't got to play with it yet. I just played with it enough to make sure that this program can talk to this machine. And it does. So, again, I appreciate the passion of the maker community and the different groups uh, of who just want to challenge themselves to make things work and then share the information uh, open to everybody in open source. So this is a free program, um, and I might try to find out uh, more how I can do donate to their group to um, show my appreciation but so that's enough talking that was a long roundabout way of what happened yesterday for four hours of doing research on the internet let's get back to aligning this machine so where we left off is we got mirror one to at least hit mirror two so at least somewhat in the general vicinity of the mirror but now what we need to do and the reason why i needed the software is so that we can have the machine on and uh uh disconnect unlock the rails so I can move it manually what we're going to be doing now is getting the laser to be uh, mirror one to shoot the laser parallel to this linear rail right here uh, so that they're coplanar that's the next step so the first thing we're going to do is get some oh, well tape there and we're going to tape our card up to our mirror one now what we're trying to do is get the point to hit at the same location when we are forward and all the way back that way we can at least get uh, if they're hitting in the same spot then we know that it is parallel to our bar so I've got the water pump going we're going to turn the machine on it's going to reset itself We go, to, we go to the software, and you see right here, we're going to unlock the rails. Alright, so it's moving. Let's unlock the rails. There, okay. Alright, so you can see here, I can move the rails. It's unlocked. Very slow. So that's what, that's what we want. If... If the rails were locked, it would be very tight. You wouldn't be able to move it with your... Well, you wouldn't be able to easily move it with your hand. Getting to the calibration, we're getting close. Um, I'm going to do a test shot. So you want to take your first shot. It wants to be all the way forward. You make your mark. And then you bring it back. And that was probably a little too much. There's a big old hole. We just need it to brown the paper. We don't need to burn a big old hole in it. Go slowly. Bring it back. And then you're going to take your second shot and see based on that that tells you the direction you want to go so you can see our second shot is the lower one so that means we need to turn our knob so that it raises it up so we're I think we're in line left and right it's just we need to go up just a little bit. We need to go halfway. We don't need to go all the way up. We just need to go halfway. So on the back side here, again, leave this locked. We don't need to do any adjustments with the diagonal. This is your left right. This is your up and down. To make it go up, we are going to turn it clockwise. Just a smidge. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little bit. Now we're back for our uh, back to our position that's all the way back we're going to take a shot and it raised it up just a little bit so I'm going to turn it just a little bit more up so that bottom left we just turn it up just a little bit and we're getting close we're getting close I'm going to switch this card now let's redo the test Okay, we got a brand new card. Let's take our initial shot all the way close. 
because this is where the reason you do it up close is because that's the least variation you have as the farther you go out it's like a cone it's going to go farther out so let's do our test shot here there's browned then we're going to bring it back slowly so we just lightly brown the paper right there and that's our first mark so we're going to take our second mark and we're we're getting close you see it's right there just a little bit below so we're going to we're going to move up again turn our mirror up just slightly let's take another shot to see where that went oh wow we're really close now so I'm going to get a new piece of paper, or a new card. I'm just using masking tape and a card, and I'm reusing it. So let's see, we'll flip it over like that. We are getting really close. And wait, this has nothing to do with the second mirror, because we need to, we're aligning the laser to our rail. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Let's get their initial shot all the way forward. You see where the rail is all the way forward. We're going to get our initial shot. All right, so it's browned. Now we're gonna bring this back. Oh, slowly, slowly. All right, we're all the way back. Let's do our test shot. And here's our full back shot. Oh, it's so close, so close. So we're gonna turn it just a smidge more up. Let's see where it takes us. Oh, we're, we're pretty close. Let's get a new card. There you go. And we're gonna move the rail back. And I think, oh. I think, oh, uh, we're so close. We, we are pretty dang close. I'm gonna just do a little bit, another adjustment up. And I th think that will have it. I mean, we are so close. I mean, it's, it's so close, I think we're going to call it. So what we just accomplished is our, mirror, our laser is parallel to our rail. So now we've got to get that laser in the uh, middle of our mirror two. So we're going to have to move mirror two around using our bracket to see if we can get it in the middle there. So I know that last step took a little longer. Uh, more of it was because uh, we were filming. I appreciate you hanging in there, uh, but I wanted to show that was a very important step to get that laser line parallel. Uh, we want to make sure that it's really on dot from the front to the back so that when it's shooting um, all the way around the bed, you're going to get a good laser beam. Now, let's get the uh, mirror two bracket adjusted so that it's in the center. So we'll need to get a piece of tape to put on the front of it. Now that we know the laser is hitting the same spot, no matter in the front or the back, we're going to put a piece of tape on the mirror to see where the laser now is hitting the mirror. So let's see where that's hitting. So it's, we're not even close, so we're going to have to make a move, which I think we're moving. I'm going to, it's not hitting right now, so I'm going to put a bigger piece of tape to give it a bigger target so I can kind of see where, where we're at. So you can see it's barely hitting on the edge of the lens. So that means we need to move the uh, entire unit over to the right, uh, probably half an inch or so. So let's get a screwdriver out and let's make our move. I'm going to make a mark on the unit itself so I kind of know where we're moving from, just in case it moves. Um, and I, Just so I get a reference point, basically. Okay, can you see how we moved? We're now at least on the mirror. We need to move over some more. All right, I moved it all the way over to the rail. We're gonna do a test shot. All right, so it is, let, let's take a look. As you can see, here's the bracket. I had to move it all the way over. It's hitting the rail here, so that's pretty much as far as an adjustment as I can make. Um, on uh, the mirror and let's see where it's hitting on the mirror itself 
So we're our last shot was right about there. So it's pretty close to center, but it's a little high. So the only way to fix that now is we better raise the uh, put some washers underneath the uh, bracket right here and raise it up um, so we can get it in the center of the mirror and uh, that which is good because I think before they were high they were way over here on the mirror so we might be able to get some good use, some uh, better usage on the mirror um, and get some more uh, life out of this mirror so instead of washers I found these uh, machine nuts which I think will be good uh, to use but let's make sure that these screws fit in deep inside there and that should raise it up enough that we that we want to okay so I had to get a longer uh, screw these were M3 machine screws or computer screws let's see here uh, I had the had to raise it up to I think 15 millimeter I think it was at 10 and this is at 15 now we got both and I added an extra washer on there too to kind of take up the space let's do the other one too so we're putting the unit all the way over touching the rail like we had it before let's see if it's moved any uh, let's do the tape test now so now we're just going to take a piece of tape put it on the lens or the mirror here and let's see where it hits as you can see we're a little high probably could raise it up a little bit more um, to get it in that center there so maybe we'll add uh, maybe we'll add another bowl we'll see, let me get some spacers to see what we can do to put in there so measuring the distance of what, what we, sh we were short and wanted to raise it up we needed to raise another eighth of an inch so I just got a bigger watt a bigger nut as a spacer so we'll put that there and of course we need a longer screw but luckily we had that ended up going all the way up now to a 15 millimeter screw and I think that's gonna work just fine and now we're just gonna add the second one in the back here got a new piece of tape up so let's see where we hit now all right we got a good mark so as you can see there that definitely made a, an improvement we we're a little low there so what I'll do is I'll just take out a washer off camera and that should raise it up and get us to at least a good point um, I don't think we can move it over anymore like I said the uh, without having to move the bed over um, the brackets pushed all the way over we can't make any more adjustments but we are pretty dang close so now that we've got mirror one aligned with the uh, Y rail and it is hitting as close and we've got it adjusted so it's hitting the mirror as close as we can to the center now we've got to um, adjust the mirror to hit uh, be in line with the x, -ax x -ax axis to make sure it's calibrated so we got to go back to do doing this test where we're going to do fire uh, the point here when it's the mirrors or the lens is close and then all the way back when the lens is far away then once that's lined up then we'll make the adjustments of this uh, lens up or down to try to get it in the center because you want to get it in the center of the mirror here so that it hits the center of the lens there uh, at the bottom there so let's um, so I've already made the mark here now we need to move this all the way back slowly and then we need to see where it's going to hit so you see we're way down here so we need to go up and over a little bit to the left but let's go up with it first and see what that does so to make that adjustment on mirror two we just go to the bottom one go counterclockwise and it will push uh, 
the land uh, the mirror up so we need to go counterclockwise and let's see where that hits so we're getting close let's do another test up front and then to the back just to see where we're at so we put a new piece of tape and moved our, our lens all the way forward we make a test shot it's a little high and then we're going to slide it back slowly and we'll and we're a little low there so we need to go a little bit higher we've got a new piece of tape on we're going to make our mark there's our mark so now we're in position two let's fire and that's pretty dang close they're hitting right on we can try with a piece of paper to get a little bit more accurate than the tape tape's kind of hard to burn it kind of burns um, kind of erratically where the paper is more of a pinpoint spot I fired at the closest position and that's our mark right there and it's right on Paper's kind of curved a little bit, so that's why it's kind of a wide beam. So now that tells us we need to find out where it's hitting on the uh, in the circle because we want to try to get it right in the middle there. All right, so just a review. We know the laser is parallel to the y-axis. We just figured everything out to get it parallel to the x-axis. Now we got to get the laser to hit. Um, into the center of the hole to hit the mirror to hit down into the to the lens. So now we made our crosshair mark. I just I'm about 12 and a half millimeters is where I think the center of the circle is, and then I just did 12 and a half millimeters over just so I can use the the edge as a uh, straight edge, and that created cross our crosshair. The bottom crosshair I lined up with where we made the little mark on the base right here to make it kind of the center of the hole. So we can kind of line it up. I'm going to do a test fire. So our test fire shows that we're way, we're up and to the left. So to make the adjustments now is I'm going to have to, to adjust the bracket here. And we've got to raise the lens up somehow. I've got to figure out how to do that. So uh, that's going to be our next step. So at this point, to uh, move it, we can move the bracket left and right. We can also, I just thought about, we can raise it up by putting some washers underneath these screws. So I'm going to do that to raise it up just a little bit. And then we'll move it back and forth. I've made a little mark here on the plate and on the gantry so we can kind of line it up and know where we need to move it back. Uh, but let me get some washers and we'll raise it up. So I'm just going to use some number 8 washers to put underneath the screw, uh, underneath the bracket to raise it up. So let's get this off here. Now that we got the bracket off, I'm going to see if we can do a balancing act. See if we can get these washers to stay while we put the bracket on. If not, we'll have to get some adhesive or something to get it to stick. I'm going to do one screw at a time here. There we go. We got one. Let's get number two on, and then I'll. Th the back one fell off, so we'll uh, get number two screw in first. I think we're in. Yeah. But I can hold it, the back one. That's a little easier. Alright, so now we need to slide this forward, or back, to where we were and a little bit past it we'll give that a try so let's get our target sheet up there this is the target we're trying to hit we'll do up close first it doesn't really matter because we should already be uh, in line but let's just make sure I mean the laser should be in line because of mirror 2 but we're going to hit the laser here Oh wow, that's awesome. That's almost dead center. It is a little high, but uh, I'll take it. So I made the mark, pushed it all the way back, 
the first one we couldn't see because the hole was so big, so I just moved the piece of paper over and um, made the dot. I don't know where it is vertically, but horizontally it's right there where it's supposed to be, and I'm assuming it should be the same because we've already lined up uh, collinear to the x-axis, so we are calibrated. I think we're pretty good. So now that we think we've got everything calibrated right, I've got a piece of wood in here. I do not know. We're going to have to run some tests. That's for another video of where the exact uh, distance the product needs to be to get the uh, proper height for the Z-height. This is a manual adjustment. Um, or it's not. It just, it's here. So uh, I'm just going to lay the piece of board here just to see what it's going to look like. Um, but this isn't going to be the right height for this unit. And there's a way to test that also, but we will do that uh, another time. So here we go. We're going to do a test shot. Look at that. That's a perfect little dot there. So this has been a truly amazing can we save it for many reasons. One, we saved it, which I, I'm pretty impressed with. Two, the, um, the history of this machine. I know it doesn't mean a lot, but to take something that was a commodity product back in... 2014, 15, 16, somewhere around there, uh, purchased by Joel from Missing Digit Workshops. Then once he uh, outgrew it, he handed it to Nick. Although Nick didn't have time to work on it, he was gracious enough to uh, give it to me to let me work on it to see if we could save it. But we wouldn't have been able to test to see if the laser worked without the free used to new to me tube from the makerspace that Nick got it from. All that, it's everyone helping each other and, I, and that's why I like about the makerspace. And the third reason is I love that people have their niche of what they enjoy doing and testing and figuring out why things work and I wouldn't be able to use this machine because it had the proprietary uh, board on it but because some people, uh, a group, wanted to get it to work just like they do the newer versions of the K40 that works for the K Whisperer, the Meerkat group. I uh, appreciate the driver that they put together so that the computer can hook up with the uh, Moshi board. I'm going to do probably another video just going through all the uh, explanation of uh, the history of the boards and stuff because I learned a lot uh, yesterday and I want to share that information and there might not be I'm sure there's a lot of units out there that's just sitting that no one can use anymore but uh, with very little cost and if you get a machine that works with no cost you can get it working again I know this was uh, going to be a long video I appreciate you sticking around I hope you got some good information out of it and this was truly fun for me I enjoyed this can we save it so remember the ABC's of making always be creating Till next time. Good morning. I didn't want to leave you with this video and not uh, showing the machine cutting or engraving or something. So last night I did a little uh, hackery, a little MacGyverism just to, uh, uh, to do some tests. So let me show you what we got. So now remember, we are just testing this machine to see if we can get this working reliably. So we did a little uh, MacGyverisms here. We got an air assist which consists of a boba straw connected to our silicone tube that's zip tied to the lens and then it goes to a uh, air gun which I use the cl clamp to hold it open and I do have pre uh, pressure regulator uh, so I can't control how much pressure is going there and then it just goes from our uh, compressor there now I also want to evacuate the smoke. Now we're not uh, removing the smoke from the area. I just wanted to get the smoke pulled away out of the machine. So if you saw a previous video where we uh, took apart a microwave and used the parts to make a turntable, this was the exhaust fan in that microwave. So that is uh, exhausting out. Yes, it's in the room, but I'm just testing paper right now. and We're only doing tests, so we're not having a full exhaust system. And then we have our uh, cooling pump and all that that we talked about earlier so so when I was doing tests I was getting uh, I started out getting some good cuts um, these were just tests testing the power I think either the mirrors are uh, are dirt so dirty that I'm losing I'm only getting probably I'm guessing 15 watts out of this uh, maybe 20 because uh, of the mirrors because I was showing doing temperature uh, different tests I'm running at seven millimeters per second at 
10 amps and that's what it takes to cut out um, just cardboard so that, I mean that's really high numbers for something that should be cutting uh, plywood at those numbers and it can barely cut this piece of uh, I think this is 8th inch dual wall uh, corrugated cardboard so um, just want to get just real quick want to show you see and then the other issue is that uh, it's, it's jamming up the software is having issues and I'm not getting complete rastering and it's freezing so I don't know if the, the de package data package is too much for the machine to handle uh, the software is in its infancy so it could be buggy too so I'm not really getting the complete cutting uh, fully fun I mean it, it works but it doesn't work reliably so it doesn't really work so at least let me at least show you uh, I can't get it to cut out I think so let's try and test that see if the machine is going to cooperate with us Well, there you have it. That shows you what's going on. I was able to do uh, a cut, and it was at seven millimeters per second, and the power is at ten milliamps. And see, it's cutting all the way through. But this is cardboard. It shouldn't be that high for a K40 laser. So, so I don't know if it is uh, the tube or the mirrors. The mirror. I mean, the mirrors are pretty bad. But I don't know if I want to continue. You know, well, it didn't cut just a little bit right there on the back. But um, so it cuts really well. But that's, I mean, that 10 milliamps is pretty high. And I tested it with the uh, multimeter yesterday. But the other issue is you saw how when I, the second function I was trying to do was doing the raster for the inlay of the design here and you saw the machine just took off and has done that every time I've only got it to raster once which happened to be here that was last night I don't know what I did differently or why the machine was working fine yesterday and then today it's not working so I don't know what the difference is of why it's not working this morning could be a software issue um, I don't know much about it I've looked through all the options and I can't really figure it out so if you have any experience with Meerkat and the Moshi board or at least Meerkat and can give me some guidance that would be great um, I'd like to upgrade to a Cohesion 3D board, just change the board out so I could use it. Um, but I don't know how much money we're going to put into this. And maybe new mirrors, uh, that might help. But I don't want to buy the new mirrors or do anything until we know that we can get a software that reliably works and cuts on this machine. So uh, we got to continue testing. But did we save it? I think so. We got it working again. It does work. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, I know it's been a long video, but I appreciate you hanging out and watching us, and uh, we'll see you next time.